we got some stuff that went down this past week. Texas State Championship recap. Calvin Heinberg is officially, in my mind, the number one player in the world. Now, UDISC world rankings say otherwise. Which, I'm, I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about that right away, but what, what no, are your let's thoughts? talk you about. Do you, no, do you have I him mean, as your number one? Yeah, how can you not? I mean, the the guy is just on another level. Like, he's if he plays like that, which it, there's no sign that he's not going to play like that, like, he's just going to podium every single time. He's just going to podium every single time because it seems like even when he has a slow start, which we saw at Vegas... Yep. He just catches right up and bam, right there. He was even contention coming down the stretch in Vegas and he was, you know, teeing off way, way late or early um, the second day of, of competition. So just to see that. And then, you know, not the best field this last week because of the Silver Series, but. I mean, he just mowed down the field. <laughs> like, like watching coverage, it just looked like. Okay, there's the field. There's Calvin Heimberg, mm-hmm. and it's not even close. There were there were a few people that weren't there, but he he just had some incredible rounds to where you know I don't want to discredit this win at all, right? Because I think some people would easily be like, oh well, you know, Ricky wasn't there, Paul wasn't there, Eagle wasn't there, Simon wasn't playing, and yes, those are all very good players. But I, I, I feel at this point in time, when Calvin is on, in this tournament he was on, I mean, I, I don't know if he'll be touched. When he's playing, when he's playing this well, I do not know if he'll be touched. Uh, we, have, we have some videos. I don't know if you've seen these. This was his basketball putt that he made. We've all seen him do this in you know the skins matches and whatnot. You, you can see him here. And he just... I mean, this, I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I heard this. I, I want to say I was like maybe five holes ahead of him at this time or something. The crowd, when this putt went in, the crowd, the crowd in Houston was incredible, by the way. There was okay. a crap ton of people out there. The roars too. I don't know if it was because we were, we were on this site where like it was kind of trees were bordering the outside and we yeah. were kind of in this bowl. But you, there was legitimate roars going going on throughout the tor- tournament, which was absolutely awesome. To I mean, I wasn't a part of any of the roars, but I got to hear them, and it was awesome. Uh, we also have this other putt. Have you seen this one, Yuli? He throws this thing into a stump. We're back with Calvin he's Heimberg. he's I'm pretty sure he's like eighty five feet away. If that was, I was the next hole, wasn't it? No, 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 no. This is this is hole number seven, I believe. Okay, so I watched when, on the live coverage. He hits the basketball he had a lot. putt, he had and a then lot. the next hole he hit a sixty footer. This putt is ridiculous. This is okay. this is a layup for us. Well, maybe you, you probably are running this. I'm probably throwing a scuba, but I mean the distance. Okay. Uh, and then when he starts running like this too, I don't know like. When he, he gets that little gallop he does, going, yeah. that, that's when he's the scariest, I feel like. Because we see a lot of times where he's just kind of emo- emotionless, I guess would be the word. Or, or when he, he gets a little bit quicker, even off the tee. Like, he'll go back to his bag, and the way that he moves is different than normal. You and you're just like, oh, oh Calvin's boy. feeling it. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um, we can pull up the top 10 here for this tournament. And I'm not... You know, I'm not pulling up the top 10 because I got top 10. Nice but, job, by the way. Nice job. It was it was a battle. Uh, you know, shout out again to my caddy for for not, you know, for showing up all three days because I was I was out of control. <laughs> not no really surprising names here. I mean, all the no. people up here are, you know, you got Calvin and a-, a-, a B had the hot round shooting 13 under didn't miss a single putt the entire round inside of 66 feet. This course also besides a few holes, this course allowed for really aggressive putting. So you just saw people, James Proctor, another name of where like he was just putting lights out. Alden Harris, I think shot 12 under the final day to move up a a bunch of spots into the top, top five. 
And then you've got Ezra too, who has Ezra's had a sneaky good season as well. And I'm not yeah. just saying that because I'm friends with him. If you look at his season, he's had a sneaky, very good season as well. You got Kyle Klein, Chris Clemens, Aaron Gossage, and then Nicholas Antilla, who also big time player as well. I mean, it was it it was a good tournament, but Calvin ran away from it. You know, I don't I don't think anyone thought he was going to win going into that final day. He was just playing so dang good all tournament. Yeah, you know, the the most surprise, not the most surprising, but I feel like the biggest story on that leaderboard, besides Calvin running away, is Proctor. Top podium, he gets on the podium all three Texas tournaments. Are you surprised? Right? Are you are you shocked that that happened? Or what's your... No, I, I'm just surprised that it's not more of a story because... Mm. That's this is his first real, I feel like, real season where he's going to play almost all the tournaments. And if that's the case, listen, I've known James Proctor has been nasty for a long, long time. Nasty, nasty. He was he was my guy when I was talking about how just wait once money starts getting up and you have people like James Proctor saying, you know what, I'm going to tour <laughs> yeah. full time. I was like, just wait, these fields are going to get nasty. Right. He's so good. He's He's, very uh, good. He, I mean, he whooped me and Ezra's butt in the doubles battle. It was it was impressive. But these are guys that I think you know. I don't I don't think there's any name on here besides mine that you're like, oh my gosh, wow, they're in the top ten. So it was a tournament. It was a very interesting course to where it definitely bode for players that had low ceiling games. Like if you yeah. aren't comfortable throwing low ceiling shots, you weren't going to probably play that well. And then people that putted, which we say every tournament, people that putted really well also kind of jumped up the leaderboard. Moving over to FPO, one of the few tournaments where the FPO course was completely different. And this is right. what I think needs to happen in the future more because you end up getting very exciting tournaments. You get, end up seeing very exciting shots and you see players like Asayananda getting a chance to actually win versus yeah. going to some of these courses where, you know, let's just be real. The people that can throw far have just a massive, massive sure. advantage. And I don't know. I thought this was watching her play this tournament. I got to see a decent amount of coverage. She was putting out Unbel of control. Unbelievable. Uh, out of control. <laughs> and then I thought like, it was to the point where, you know, because I watched a decent amount of it too. But I thought it was to the point where I'm not sure she always puts that good because she makes like her last putt for the win. It goes in center. And it was almost, I think she might have just been overjoyed because she won the tournament. But it was like every putt, she looked so excited. She's so you know, happy. So happy that she made it. And I don't know. I, I hope that it's just because she's having the best time ever playing disc golf in it and it's just, you know, going her way. But the way that she was reacting, I felt like I made another one. <laughs> like, this is crazy, you know? She has bounced up some of the leaderboards. Oh, I, for I, sure. I, I definitely have seen some. There was a stat with some majors that she's had where she's had like a couple, like three she, or four top tens in some yeah, of she the took last fifth, majors. I think, at the. Um, their United States Disc Golf Championship last year. Mm. I believe she took fifth. I just think this is, this has to be like important to the Disc Golf Pro Tour moving forward is like getting the FPO field on their own course. Yeah, no, I, I, I can to totally agree with that. It just, I think it just makes it for such a more, more interesting tournament. Um, did you see this stat? There's been six unique winners this year from six tournaments this year. There's six tournaments in FBO, six unique winners. That's no one's amazing. won twice. No um, way. I didn't, which, I didn't know that. Going into the season, how much money would you have won if you bet that? <laughs> oh <my> right? <laughs> We'd be rich. <laughs> With just how, how, how the tournaments went last year. Um, and then there have only been two players that have ever beat Kristen Tatar in a silver event. One, Sayananda. Do you know the other one? Mm. 
And this might be because Kristen has, hasn't played in that many silver yeah, events. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Maybe even one of the Mondahanos? Uh, it's Katrina Allen. So okay. those two are the only two that have only be- beat, and that's to, thanks to Stat Mando. Um, and we have another Stat Mando one coming okay. up of where should we be concerned at all with Kristen Tatar? And this is, this is a stat that I thought was, uh, you know, kind of interesting. So when she goes into a final round and she's ahead, uh, and she is uh, two strokes or fewer, right? She's trailing two strokes or fewer. She's won two of the eight times. When she's three strokes or fewer trailing, she's won zero of 15. Is she, a, is she a little bit of a front runner in the sense of like... <laughs> a little bit. It sounds like that's exactly what she is, is a front runner. When she's feeling it, you're not going to beat her. But if she, like, does she have... What is this? Is this showing us anything or... Well, I'll or tell am you I, this. am I looking into I totally it a little too get, much? No, I totally get that type of thing. Now, I am not in comparison to ever been as good as Kristen Starr. Let's just get that out there. But... Out of my, somebody told me this, out of my over 100 wins, I've never come back from a, a like a four-stroke deficit, but like three times ever. And 80 of the tournaments I was leading. So I've, I am not, I do not like coming back from. You like staying up at, at yeah, the top. Yeah, if I'm playing well and I'm in the lead, most of the time I'm going to win the tournament. Hmm. And so I I totally get that stat. Now, she's just too good. <laughs> We're talking about me. It's, Kristen is just uh, too good for that stat to hold up. Something is different though. You you, you can't you can't watch her play and not not address that something is different than last year. I don't know what it is. You know, obviously you can look at the stats and say like, well, she's throwing OB more. She's not putting as much. I'm just talking about just the way. She looks while playing. She it, it it looks different, and I don't know I don't know what it is. Well, I know she's been dealing with some injuries, so for sure. With that being said, that that's that one that'll, I mean, an injury is an injury. That's gonna hurt your disc golf game. Um, but I mean, right now, let's give a little credit to the FPO field as well. I mean, for sure, they're getting good. Six for different sure. winners. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has to do with just the, the courses that we are playing, right? Like, I think the courses are getting better and better at producing a more competitive field than, you know, favoring a, a select handful of players. Um, but yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess we'll we'll kind of keep, I, I just, and, and maybe it is her injuries. Maybe it is. I, she didn't really make that big of a fuss about it, I guess, coming into the season. Yeah. And so, Maybe she downplayed it more. Maybe it is something that is causing issues that she's just not addressing to the media and whatnot. But, you know, I, I, I do think with how good of a season she had last year, the pressure that she must be feeling going into this season. Because um, we saw, we saw, I don't know if you watched the final round, we saw some frustration that I've never seen out of her, really, I that think- often. I think we can make our first assumption with something like that after the major because that, okay. that, with that with that caliber of player at some point like their seasons are going she is now in the realm of how many majors did she win mm-hmm. and that's how they they're because she's going to get wins she's going to get another elite series this year she's that good like I mean, it's just a matter of time top. yeah yep, every sure. single time how many majors does she get and then after Champions Cup, we'll, we'll have a good idea probably if maybe she wins by 10 and then we're going to have a completely different conversation. Yeah, well, I just have to also give a huge props to Sayananda too because yeah. we have seen this year where people have been in her position before and weren't able to hold off the people chasing and she just didn't blink. That oh, final so round, cool to watch. That final round, she had a couple holes where you could tell like, ooh, that putt was a little nervy. But the majority of that round, she did not blink. And coming into the final hole 17, hole 18 are not easy tee shots. She played hole 17 very smart and then was able to, you know, get her tee shot dry on hole 18, which is all she needed to do. 
And so like big shout outs to her. And I'm, I'm definitely interested to kind of see what she can do now when you, cause sometimes these players, all they need is one win. They get yeah. that one win under their belt and they're like, Holy crap, I can do this. So I'm very interested to kind of see what she does th- these next couple of events. And I don't know her schedule. I don't know if she's planning on playing a bunch, but I hope to, I think she's a great addition to the field. And also like you were saying, she was just fun to watch. Yeah. Like she, like, I don't know when her, she was making those putts and stuff. It was very fun. Speaking yeah. of someone that was fun to watch own Scoggins. Did you see this ACE? Yes. I mean, this was, this is, I believe hole it. two. Here's own Scoggins. And I don't know what's better. The actual shot or her reaction. <laughs> the reaction. She, she is like, cause you know, she starts celebrating. She does the hugs with everyone, right? Cat merch is there. Everyone's freaking out. Yeah. And then she's like, all right, I'm going to, uh, wait, someone still has to throw. Wait, can I go run again? I'm going to run again. <laughs> like someone still has to throw on the tee. Yeah, she and she's bolts. like, nope, I'm just going with her arms out airplane style. Um, she is really, really fun to watch. Not just her game. Like her game is really cool to watch with how she throws those super high over stable flex forehands and mm-hmm. stuff. And her putting is ridiculous. Like, I don't know how a putt that wobbly is that accurate. I literally, it, it blows my mind, but she just makes everything. And then uh, just her personality too. It's, it's, she's a lot of fun to watch and she's been yes. having a heck of a, heck of a last couple seasons, you know, yes. jumping onto it. Uh, another video here, Gannon Burr. Um, this was, <laughs> this was, <laughs> Uh, a backup we had on hole eight and um there's a playground that is just right (laughs) next to the backup and he's like doing some american ninja warrior through the playground pretty pretty good pretty good And it's like you know if some if some people did this you'd be like all right they're hamming it up for the cameras they know someone's watching but he's actually having a good time he he would be doing this if no one was out there (laughs) yeah you know, you, you, you forget how young of a kid he is. Yeah. And like, this just shows that, you know, he's just, he's just having a good time. Yeah. He's just out there having a good time. Um, so he, I, I just thought that was funny. Also <laughs> so good. watching his like lanky ginormous body go through <laughs> a little kid's like playground <laughs> is, is very funny. 